Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for coming to celebrate this incredible achievement. I could start crying, but I'm an ugly crier. I'm so happy, so I'm not going to do that. But I'm so grateful to be here to celebrate Illinois' newest national park, historic park, a designation that Pullman has long, long deserved. The ground we stand on right now holds so much of our national story. The labor actions that built the middle class and launched our nation into a century of unprecedented prosperity began right here in Pullman. And I know many of you know the story and know it better than me, but you're going to hear it again. Almost a century and a half ago, George Pullman built his factory and worker housing side by side on Chicago's south side, the first factory town of its kind in this country. America was rapidly growing and the railroad industry needed better rail cars for passengers who for the first time ever were traveling across the country by train. For many years, Pullman set the standard by building state-of-the-art rail cars for American travelers. But as business was booming, those production workers and craftsmen began getting shortchanged. Thus began one of the first major labor actions in American history. Pullman workers held out for fair wages and launched the American labor movement. When these luxurious rail cars needed a similar upgrade in their customer service, it was the Pullman porters who came to prominence as exceptional service workers on the trains they staffed. Many of these workers were African American men who had come to Chicago as part of the Great Migration seeking opportunities and a better life. But the porters also faced unfair treatment, and when they organized for better conditions, they formed the first black trade union in the country. The, in yeah. <laughs> the International Brotherhood of Pullman Porters stood up for the rights of African American working men and women across the country. Pullman workers refused to waver in the struggle for civil rights. They stood strong in the face of deadly riots and ultimately forced Congress and the President to recognize the monumental contributions that working men and women were making every day. And the events in Pullman ultimately led to the creation of our Labor Day holiday, which as you know, we celebrate to this very day. While practically everyone in this country celebrates Labor Day, Pullman is left out of our popular national story, story far too often. A few decades back, when many felt Pullman had outlived its usefulness, some Chicago leaders, not the ones here, proposed bulldozing the entire town. But as its history reflects, Pullman community leaders and residents, I'm sure some of the ones here, descendants of rail car makers and porters alike, stood together, stood firm, and saved their neighborhood, their heritage, and this unique piece of American history. That is why it is so important to continue the work of my predecessor. Yes, I stand on the shoulders of Congressman Jesse Jackson, Jr. when it comes to Pullman. As many of you know, the road to the National Park designation was very long. President Obama, as you heard, brought us closer to this reality when he designated Pullman as a national monument in 2015. The history and legacy of Pullman finally got the national rec recognition it deserved, but there is still more work to be done. Monument designations can be accomplished by presidents alone, but that means they can also be undone by presidents alone. Only with the help of Congress can a national park be created and give Pullman the pride of place among our nation's most precious historical sites. Finally, the 117th Congress, December 29th, Congress made our dreams come true. I am so proud, I was so proud to introduce this bill in the House of Representatives. Seeing this legislation come to life is one of the best parts of getting to serve you in Congress. <laughs> this remarkable achievement was made possible only through the cooperation and collaboration of leaders from the public and private sectors and the residents of the neighborhood. We also secured $1.5 million in our community projects for the Pullman Porter Museum, and I know Lynn is here. This designation means that families from all over the country, and I will say all over the world because I know that has already happened, will come to Pullman to experience the richness of its history and the vibrancy of its community. Now more than ever, we must protect and preserve Pullman's legacy. 
Pullman exemplifies the rise of the middle class, the laborers that built the foundation of our country's economy for it to be included in the wealth that they created. What they built is the reason why we have the flourishing and prosperous country that we have today. But just like when the Pullman workers were first fighting for their rights, we are still struggling against forces that seek to make the richer rich richer while the rest of us get left behind. Pullman is a constant reminder of the power that we hold in our communities and that nothing is impossible when we work together for what's right. The National Historical Park designation will properly honor the historical and cultural significance of Pullman so that generations to come can learn its important lessons. There are too many community members who helped make this a reality to name individually, but I'm so grateful to each and every one of them for their hard work and dedication that made Pullman a national landmark. But I am going to take a point of personal privilege and thank you, Mike, so much for all of your work. You were relentless. You were relentless. And Mrs. Pullman, thank you so, so very much for everything you've done. Finally, I want to personally thank everyone in this room because everyone here has made meaningful and substantial contributions to Pullman National Park. And last but not least, I want to thank my hardworking staff and especially Rick Bryant. When I came to office almost 10 years ago, he said right away that we should continue this work and make this national park happen. Rick, it happened. So I, and I especially want to thank my esteemed colleague, Senator Dick Durbin, who led the charge for Pullman in the Senate. I am so pleased that you are here today so we can share this together. And now it's my true honor to give you the mic. <laughs> Well, this is a great morning to celebrate good news. I'm happy to be part of it, and a whole lot of people worked long and hard, as Robin just noted, to make it a reality. Particular thanks to the historic Pullman Foundation, the National Park Conservation Association, Chicago Neighborhood Initiative for their invaluable effort to preserve this important part of Chicago's and America's history. Mayor Lightfoot, thank you. You've been a strong supporter during this term in office, and I thank you so much for all of support that you've given to this effort. In the Senate, uh, my colleague Tammy Duckworth and I shared the billing for anything that uh, headed our way. Uh, we worked on it together and we're committed to it. But I have to tell you that the real driving force in Congress to save Pullman is this woman right here, Congresswoman Robin Kelly. What a, what a tremendous job you've done, Robin. This is a great legacy uh, that you leave, not just to this community and this district and this state, but to this nation. This last Monday, we celebrated Dr. Martin Luther King's national holiday. It's the only national holiday dedicated to an individual. Thank goodness we have it. Martin Luther King Jr. Day gives us the opportunity to each year check in and see how far we've come to, uh, to reach his dream how far we've strayed from it as well, from his vision of America at peace with its conscience. We know the shocking anger and brutality Dr. King was met with during the months he lived in Chicago nearly 60 years ago. That's a fact. If Dr. King were here today, I wish he could be, I hope he would be pleased to see what we've done at this place, which is an essential part of the history of not only America's labor movement, but the civil rights movement in modern times in this country. Today, we protect this place, this National Historic Park. The Pullman National Historic Park now joins President Abraham Lincoln's home in Springfield as only the second National Historic Park in our state. That's important. I think Robin Kelly has noted this, but I want to repeat it. It makes a difference between being a National Historic Monument and being a National Historic Park. As, we, as we've noted, presidents can designate monuments and undesignate them, or at least try to. And we're in court battling a previous president in some of the efforts he made to eliminate, for example, Bears Ears National mm -hmm. Monument, which was uh, designated by President Obama. The other president decided put it away and end it, and we're fighting him in court over it. 
But today, at this place, we move from National Monument and all the controversy associated with it to National Historic Park. And it means that anybody who wants to get their hands on Pullman has to come through Robin Kelly and Durbin <laughs> and Duckworth and the U.S. Constitution. The timing of this couldn't be better at this moment in history. We all hope that the election and re-election of America's first black president, Barack Obama, and the grace and dignity of Michelle Obama, which she brought to her role as First Lady, would be a turning point in America. I remember that inauguration, that cold, cold day in Washington. I'm sure you do, too. And I watched as our Barack Obama reached out and put his hand to take the oath of office on the Bible of Abraham Lincoln. And I thought to myself, Durbin, at this moment in your life, you've come full circle from your college days in the civil rights movement to a black president taking the oath of office on Abraham Lincoln's Bible. I thought America would change for the better, and in many ways it did. But we also know that some other things happened. We know as well that we experienced a change in America on the negative side. And we see today in states where the truth about slavery and heroes like Sojourner Truth, Martin Luther King Jr. are being written out of state education curricula and books by hundreds of authors, including Toni Morrison, a Nobel laureate, are being pulled from school library shelves because they speak honestly about race and sexual identity and other topics that the so-called anti-woke group just doesn't like. Well, we have a message to book burners and the whitewashers of history. Illinoisans are proud of the truth of history. That's why we're here today. We embrace it, we protect it, we learn from it, and that's why we celebrate it. On this ground, outside of this building, the American labor movement was born in strife and bloodshed. It was stopped, the strike was stopped by federal troops sent by President Grover Cleveland, but it did not put an end to the aspiration of the men and women who lived here. They were determined, and their determination led to a better America today, and we're ready to celebrate that for generations to come. Thank you for allowing me to be part of this program with you today, and let me introduce the alderman from this ward, I always say when you're in Chicago, you never forget the aldermen. Members of Congress deal with issues of war and peace. Those are important. But the alderman deals with issues of zoning <laughs> and many other important things. Alderman Tony Beale, please come up. Thank you, Senator. This is another, another great day in the Ninth Ward. Am I right, Tony? <laughs> Before we get started, I also want to acknowledge uh, my state rep, Nicholas Smith, who's here. Let's give it up for Nicholas Smith. If you all don't know, Nicholas Smith delivered $25 million to our community from Springfield, so we're definitely grateful to our state rep for delivering the money to our community. Uh, but we're here today to celebrate a national park, one in the city of Chicago that nobody ever thought would happen. We're excited to be here. But it would not have happened without our congressional delegation, Robin Kelly, our congresswoman, Senator Durbin, who from day one have continued to move this mantle forward to make sure that they represented the voice of this community. And the voice of this community, the Pullman community, is one like no other. So if we can, just give a big round of applause for my residents here in the Rosa Pullman community for staying the course. And so when I heard Rick talk about how fast this thing moved, well, this was the first time you all came to Pullman. <laughs> and so we're trendsetters. We know how to get things done. And so we want to make sure that you all understand and, and know that when you come to Chicago, there's no other resident that knows how to fight to get things done more than the Pullman community. So we're definitely grateful that you all are going to take this model across the country and model this on how to move things forward and get things done. And so I want to just talk about real quick what this means to our community. Since this designation has taken place, we have created over 2,000 jobs and we have invested over 500 million in public-private investment in our community. No other community in the city of Chicago can say that. And so what does that mean? That means that our community is growing faster than any other community. When you look at what we've done with the Walmart, when you look at what we've done with 
Planet Fitness, when you look what we've done with, with, with Ross, SC Johnson, Method, Gotham Greens, the Pullman Community Center, and our last gym, Amazon, that created 400 jobs in our community. But now we have a Culver's that has just opened up. We have Lexington Betty's that has opened up. And these are restaurants that are ran and operated by African Americans that are from our community. So we're excited and we want you all to support Lexington Betty's and Culver's because I think the mayor's going to Lexington Betty when she leaves here. So <laughs> I, I think they got a plate oh waiver. <laughs> So we're just really excited, and I'm sorry, I see Commissioner um, 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 Donna Miller in the back. I'm sorry. Right, let's give it up for our Commissioner in the back, Donna Miller. So when you do great things, everybody comes out. And we want to make sure that all our elected officials, when they come to our community, they understand and they know, bring the dough back to the Pullman community. <laughs> So thank you all so much, and you all understand this community is on the move, it's on the, it's, we're growing by leaps and bounds, and it's a great place, and we have a hidden gem, but this hidden gem is a definite, definite tribute to the hard work of the men and women of our community. So thank you all so much, we really do appreciate you. So next I have the pleasure, I have the pleasure of bringing up our mayor, Mayor Lori Lightfoot. So, it, of course, it's a great day in Pullman, but it's a great day in the city of Chicago. And it's really a great day in our country because this designation as a national historic park will redound to the benefit of our, our entire country to make sure that we continue to tell the foundational and important chapter of the labor movement and other parts of the history of our country that started right here in Pullman. So it's a fabulous opportunity uh, for us uh, to celebrate. This redesignation truly highlights how significant this community is to our city and the rest of the country. And as many of you know and as you heard, giving Pullman the recognition it deserves is an effort that truly has been decades in the making. That recognition came first in 1970 when the Pullman Historic District was designated as a National Historic Landmark. It was then enhanced by former President Barack Obama in 2015, as you heard, who then designated the district as a national monument. But we weren't uh, content with that. You weren't content with that. So the work continued. And now, less than 10 years later, the Pullman Historic District has become a national historical park. And as you heard... <clears throat> and as you heard from Senator Durbin, second only to a park designated and honoring our great president, Abraham Lincoln. So we are in rarefied air, and rightly so. You heard uh, from Superintendent Gage all the people who were responsible, but I want to highlight a couple. Um, and what we must underscore is that the level of cooperation and collaboration amongst our congressional delegation is second to none. So I have to thank you publicly, Senator Durbin. I want to thank Senator Duckworth. But of course, I also want to thank our champion, our friend, uh, Congresswoman Robin Kelly. This would not have happened without you. Thank you for your tireless work. <clears throat> and, and Rick Bryan, I've known you for a long time. You ought to be taking a victory lap on this day as well. Where is Rick? I know. All right. You ought to be taking a victory lap as well. <clears throat> I also want to thank um, Alderman Beal and the folks that are really focused on economic development down here in the Ninth Ward. Pullman is critically important, and I'm going to talk about Roseland, which is also equally important in my mind. But thank you, Alderman Beal, for all that you've done. Thank you, David Doig. Uh, thank you, all the folks at CNA who, CNI who really understand that investing in communities is a catalyst. It's a way that we grow the, the middle class. It's a way that we right a lot of historic wrongs, and it's a, a way in which we bring safety and peace to communities. I said this also to uh, the class that's here um, training uh, to understand how they can help and impact um, not only here uh, at this uh, historic uh, national park, but the entire community and the communities in which they live. Making sure that we've got a pipeline of talent, particularly in the trades, make sure that we are building the middle 
class. That means that we are building wealth in communities that's going to pass down and we're down to the benefit of the individuals, their families, and their communities, and our entire city. That's critically important. So congratulations again to all those. To, congratulations to the teachers, but importantly, congratulate, uh, congratulations to the apprentices that are <clears throat> a part of this as well. Now, I, I also want to make sure that you understand that as the mayor, I'm not just standing here to say thank you and kudos to everyone. We have to have skin in the game too, and we do. So let me tell you a little bit uh, about that. Um, we know that this National Historic Park uh, will better be, and be an anchor in this community and complement the work that we have been doing both in Pullman and in Roseland. So for example, through our Neighborhood Investment Initiative, Invest Southwest, we are making significant improvements to the greater Roseland community area, which of course includes Pullman. For example, we have more than $29 million in streetscape improvements planned. And Chew Chicago is already at work to make sure that this national park is going to be part of the uh, marketing campaign for Chicago to get tourists and visitors to come and spend a little money in Paul. <laughs> and just last month, uh, with the uh, collaboration and cooperation of Alderman Beal, and I also have to give a shout out to Reverend Meeks, um, we issued a request for qualification for developers to create mixed-use redevelopment proposals for three key sites along South Michigan Avenue, just a couple blocks away from here. We got to make sure. <laughs> we have to make sure that South Michigan Avenue of Roseland is just as vital and thriving as the North Side Michigan Avenue, and it's coming. It's coming. This effort will transform over 4.3 acres of city land and former historic sites into housing, retail, and other amenities aimed at improving residents' quality of life and attracting visitors to Pullman and to Roseland. We want to, the residents of the far south region here to have the same kind of amenities, a walkable neighborhood that we take for granted on the north side and with the folks that are in this room, the collaboration of the Alderman, David Doig and his team and others, we are going to get it done. You can clap for that. And I would be remiss if I was standing here on the south side and I didn't talk about the red line extension is coming. So again, thank you to our congressional delegation. I'm going to thank the U.S. Department of Transportation, led by my friend, Secretary P Pete Buttigieg. So the point here, folks, is this is a very important and happy day. As a, as a lover of history, I'm excited about what the possibilities are for this national historic site. But it's part of a larger plan to make sure that South Chicago, this area, that you all love so dearly, have committed your lives to, isn't left behind. But instead, there are phoenixes rising from the ashes, and all of you are contributing to them. And I am ecstatic to be a part of it and committed to making sure that my administration does absolutely everything possible to continue the hard work that began a long time ago and will continue for a long time into the future. Thank you, one and all. Thank you.